Resultant set of policy. When you have a large hierarchy of OUs with group policies being applied, it can be difficult to know what the end result of your policy will be for a specific user. Now that's where the resultant set of policy or RSOP comes into play. The RSOP is an MMC snap-in that we can use to determine what a user's actual effective policy will be. We can also use RSOP to simulate what happens if we were to move a user or computer account to a different location, such as another OU, and then see what happens to their effective policy. Now the RSOP MMC doesn't actually appear in our administrative tool, so we'll have to add it in manually. So what we'll do is we'll click on Start, Run, and then type MMC. Now this opens up a blank console, and I'll just expand the window here. So we'll go to our file menu and we'll select Add Remove Snap-in. And then we'll come down here and click on Add. And then we'll scroll down. And then we'll select Resultant Set of Policy. And then we'll click on Add. And now we can close this down. We'll click OK. And we can see our Resultant Set of Policy over here in the left-hand side. Now if we right-click on Resultant Set of Policy, we have the option to generate RSOP data. So we'll do that, which starts up the Resultant Set of Policy wizard. And then we'll click Next. Now as you can see, we have two options. We have Logging Mode or Planning Mode. Now we can use logging mode to report back the existing group policy object settings for users and computers, but only those users of computers that have previously logged onto our domain. Now in planning mode, we can simulate the group policy object settings that a user or computer might receive, and then test scenarios such as if the user was moved to a different OU, how the policy change would affect their settings. So we'll go through both. We'll start with logging, and we'll click next. Now we can choose which computer we wish to run our RSOP query on. Now the default is this computer or the local computer. Now we'll choose that, but we can also browse for another computer if we want. And by selecting this box below, we can exclude computers in the query altogether and then just display user results. So we'll leave the default for this computer and we'll choose next. Now we can choose the user that we wish to run our RSOP query against. Now the default is the current user, so in other words who we're currently logged on as, which is the administrator. Now we can select a specific user from the available list, and like with our computer accounts, we can also exclude user accounts in the query. But we'll leave the default as the current user and we'll select next. And now we get a summary of the query we're about to run. So we'll just choose next, and the progress bar will just kick along, and it'll tell us that our RSOP query is gathering data about the information. And we're finished. Our RSOP query is complete, so we'll click on finished. Now, as you can see up here in the top left, we have uh, an administrator on server 01 RSOP link in our MMC, and on the right we have a computer configuration and user configuration options. So if we expand our administrator on server 01, we can see that we have a couple of folders down here and that looks very similar to what we saw in our group policy videos. So what we'll do is we'll expand our window settings, security settings, and we'll expand our account policies and we'll take a look at, say, the password policy. So on the right over here, we can see the policies that are being applied to our administrator account. We can see the settings that are being applied and over here on the far right, we can see the source GPO that applied the policy. So you can see running the RSOP query in logging mode to find out what policies are being applied against a user or a computer account, it's incredibly easy to do. So what we'll do now is we'll go back up to our file menu and we'll select new to create a new MMC. And then we'll go back in and we'll re-add in our RSOP snap-in. We'll click close and OK. And now I'll just expand this again. OK, so again we'll right click and we'll select generate RSOP data. We'll choose next. And this time we'll select Planning Mode. OK, we have two sets of information here that we can supply. We can supply user information and we can supply computer information. Alternatively, we can also supply both. So what we'll do is we'll select User and then we'll select Browse and then we'll use Active Directory to go and locate a user account and we'll use Bob in this example. So we'll click on OK and then OK and we can see Bob's user account has now been put here in this field. Now we'll also go and select a computer account and we'll click Browse again and go through the same thing that we just did before with Bob's user account. And we'll choose XP Client because we know that Bob regularly logs on the XP Client. And then we'll choose OK and OK again. And we can see that test domain slash XP Client has now been put under our computer, computer information field. 
Now one final note here with this page, uh, if we check this box here we can actually skip to the final page of the wizard without collecting any more data. So if you know that of all the screens that are coming up in this wizard that uh, you don't need to configure any of these options, you could certainly click this box, then check next, and then you just go straight to the end of the wizard. But we'll see this here, this link, uh, supplied on quite a few of the next pages as well, so we can uh, do this at any time. So what we'll do now is we'll click next. Next we can select some advanced simulation options. So for example, we could simulate what would occur if Bob was to move to a slow network connection, so for example a dial-up connection. Now this would be useful if Bob's going to be working from home regularly on a dial-up connection and we want to know how his slow link is going to affect his policy. Because when we're dealing with a slow link, there's certain policies that won't be applied, such as when we use policies to install applications. Now we also have the, an option for uh, loopback processing. Loopback processing is an advanced setting that doesn't process GPOs in the local site domain and OU order that we've talked about in the past. With loopback processing we have two modes, replace and merge. Now replace mode replaces the normal GPOs you'd expect the user to get with the GPO list that's already been obtained by the computer at startup. In merge mode, the GPO list for the computer is concatenated, or if you like, added to the GPO list obtained for the user when logging on. And because the computer GPO is applied last, it will, and this is the only time it will by the way, override the user's GPO. I'll unselect that for the moment. Now we can also, by the way, uh, test this query against a site if you like. Now we only have the one site now list, so it's kind of pointless, so we won't use that in this instance. We'll just move on. Now we can specify alternate Active Directory paths. Now this is useful as Bob's going to be moving to a new location, such as if we're going to be moving his account from the US Sales OU to the US Marketing OU. We can also do the same for Bob's computer account as well. In fact, why don't we go and do that? We'll actually click on Browse, and then we'll expand our test domain. Now we know that Bob is currently a member of our US users. In fact, let's just pop him straight back in the Users container, and we'll see what that effect has on his policy. So then we'll click Next. Next, we could simulate what happens when Bob's group membership changes. So what would happen if Bob was now added to the Domain Administrators group? How would this affect his policy? Well, in answer to that question, we could simply click on Add and Advanced and find now, we'll just expand this, and we could scroll down and select another group for uh, Bob to uh, be a part of, and we'll select the Domain Admins group, and then we'll click on OK, and then OK again. Now this actually won't change Bob's group membership of course, we're just in simulation mode, so you could whack Bob in as many groups as you like, it won't do any harm, it might just take a little longer to process the query. So you can make your choices, now if you get carried away and you add too many, and then you forget what groups Bob was originally a member of, you can come down here and click the restore defaults, and then Bob's normal group membership would be displayed. Ok, so we'll leave those settings and we'll choose next. Now the same applies to computer groups as well. We could add Bob's computer to other groups to see what effect on policy has. Now the format is the same as before, we'll just simply click Add, locate any other groups and then we'll click on Next. Now finally, we can also link WMI filters to this query. This is not only useful for testing your policy changes, but also for testing your WMI scripts. Now you might have a script that checks for say a certain amount of RAM, let's say 256 megabytes of RAM that must be installed in the computer. Now you know Bob has 512 megabytes of RAM, yet he doesn't seem to be applying the policy. Well you can use this option to add additional WMI filters to test the results and find out why Bob wasn't applying the policy. Now we don't actually have any filters, so we won't add any here, but to add one, we'd simply click on only these filters, and then click on the list filters button, then your filters would be listed, you could simply select one, and then select next. Now we can also provide WMI filters for computers as well, and we've just talked about that, the process is exactly the same for adding them in, so we'll just click next, and of course now we get our summary screen. So if everything looks OK up here, we'll click on Next, and then we'll start the query in the progress bar, we'll kick into action, again telling us that our RSOP query is gathering information behind the scenes. Alright, and we're done, so we'll click Finish. And now we can see Bob's user account on XP Client RSOP link in our MMC, and the computer configuration and user configuration options over here on the right. Now we can go through all of his details, take a look at any changes we might have made to Bob, and how it's going to affect his group policy settings.